Hey everyone, welcome to Pro Volley USA. I am here with Tori Dixon, and for this week, we're gonna be focusing on the overseas experience. Tori is a middle blocker. She's a first team All-American that graduated from the University of Minnesota in 2014, and she's been playing with the national team ever since. Thank you so much for coming. Me. Don't age me. Don't age me. Get my me. ear right. <laughs> so basically, we're just gonna be picking her brain. She has so much pro experience, and we're just gonna be getting a little inside scoop about how she has experienced different leagues and just everything that we can gain from her. Ready? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> okay, so if you could just tell me about like some of the different leagues you've played for yep. and just the different quality, um, better or worse qualities that you've had with each league. Yeah, I played in Azerbaijan for two years and that was my first overseas experience. The good thing is it was had the best players in the world at the time. I think everyone and their mother used to play in Baku at one point in time. And so that was kind of like, my agent called me and was like, this team wants you. They're already qualified for Champions League, Champions League Final Four. And I was like, okay, oh, sign nice. me up, let's go. Yeah. And so I joined there and re-signed with them. So I was with them for two seasons with a lot of Americans mm -hmm. who were there, played with Faluk Akhenrod, played oh, with nice. Kayla Banworth, played with literally all the foreigners, all everyone. So I really enjoyed my experience there. And then after that, I went to Japan. Uh -huh. um, and that was interesting because it was, I was the only foreigner on the team. And so that was the biggest struggle of and that that's, year. And that's kind of how it is for Asian leagues, right? Yes, um, so it's typically one or two. Okay. My China, we'll get to China, but I had three. <laughs> Three, which was great, but that's not the norm for yeah. sure. I love Japan. It's been one of my favorite places to play. Fans are great. They treated me really well. Loved it. Got hurt there, took a year off, and then the year after that, I went to Italy, played for Monza, um, and I loved it. It's, the Italian league is one of the best volleyball leagues in the world. Yeah, I just had a great experience. It came with, that was my full, like, full European experience, mm -hmm. and um, it was really tough. The level is so high and everything, but I also had Micah Hancock on my team and other Americans, so it was really good getting to play with another American after playing in Japan and kind of being yeah. a little isolated. No, for sure. Um, after that, I played in China for three years. Woo! <sighs> <And> China, <laughs> China is a different beast for sure. It's um, a shorter season, which four I four months, right? Yes, which I loved. Okay, I and then for your other leagues, were they all a full eight month um, season? The European leagues, Baku and Italy, were eight months. Japan was a little bit shorter. I think I finished in like March. Okay. And um, you were saying with the Azerbaijan league, they were already in Champions League with the Yeah, Final so I finished college December 2013 and they needed me for half a season. Okay. And so when my agent was like, yeah, this team's already qualified for Final Four, it'd be great exposure, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right. But yeah. least, like, <laughs> just walking on to one of the best teams in the world. Yeah, like, that's awesome. Hey, but um, yeah, so they already qualified, everything was good. Um, and then, so I played that half season and then another full season on top of that. Well, it sounds like you've had great experiences. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would you say has been the toughest part about any of the leagues? Um, man, there's a few tough, I think the, the hardest was probably gonna be like Japan and China, just yeah. dealing with the language barrier and we'll also, get to that later. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> language yeah. barrier is an issue and also just like, not having a lot of foreigners too is difficult and being the only one was really hard but luckily i had two great foreigners with me both years and or all three years in china actually my third year i was alone but um at that point i kind of already know knew the girls and stuff but i think dealing with being alone a lot of the time and being able to like kind of find yourself and like yeah i don't know just kind of sure. struggle through some things yeah. without someone to hang out with and all that is really hard. It kind of takes the team part out of mm -hmm. volleyball, which I really enjoy, but yeah. um, the girls were great. It's nothing against the yeah. girls. It's just like, you know, when you don't speak the same language, right. it's hard to connect. It's hard to yeah. do everything, so. You're you're married now. Yes. How long have you been with your husband? And has that been something that has been a struggle playing professionally, or has it been really accommodating? Because there's girls that are in relationships mm -hmm. and they're looking to go overseas, they're looking to leave their family, so what, what has that been like? Yeah, it's been, it's it's hard, I'm not gonna lie, like it's not the easiest being away from your husband or your significant other for eight months at a time, mm -hmm. so um, it's been really difficult to, and there's also like a learning period about living together when you come back, yeah. like 
he wants the dishes done this way and the laundry <laughs> done this way. And it's like, okay, but I've been doing them this yeah. way for eight right. months of the year. So yeah, but I think most, I mean, myself included, mm -hmm. but most girls try to get their significant others to like visit them a lot and um, come out a lot. Some will even take this whole season yeah. and just go with them. That's my awesome. husband came with me to Italy okay. my when I played in Italy, which is great because he always wanted to live in Italy and stuff. I mean, it was a dream. So yeah. <laughs> that was an easy sell. But yeah, he, then he got a big boy job and had to <laughs> stay here. So yeah, it's hard. It's no, definitely yeah. hard. What about when you're transitioning back? So after your pro league, you're coming here, you're training with the national team. What has that been like? Um, there's a lot of different countries that are training together all year round or month, months upon months and you guys are thrown together, you have a team and then you go compete. So yeah. what, what's that like uh, every time you're coming back from pro? It's hard. It's really hard. I, my last season I played in Turkey this past season and you know got home, had a little bit of time off a week training and then we were off to street Fort for BNL. So yeah. it's just like, it's such a quick turnaround. It's really hard just getting used to playing in the same system and different players, different players yeah. rotating in and out and stuff. And so I think my easiest transition transition years were the years where I played shorter seasons mm -hmm. in Japan and China, because then I got to come back and I used to have like a month long training block or mm -hmm. like two months, I don't know, just more a little time. break too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a nice little break, a little vacation, but just getting into the swing of things is always really hard, just trying to figure out um, how to play with people again yeah. and stuff, but we try our best. No, for <laughs> sure. And it's so nice because, at least from my experience here, USA has so much depth. I mean, mm -hmm. they're sending different girls to different VNL locations every week, and I think that's something really special that not a lot of countries have. Exactly. Um, so what's that like, being able to play with different players and going to compete with them? Is there any struggles with that, or do you love the depth that we have? You know, I love the depth. I'm not going to lie and say yeah. I don't love it, but because <laughs> I, I do, it gives us um, what some other countries maybe don't have, is mm -hmm. the ability to take longer periods of time off and um, kind of push those boundaries mm -hmm. of, you know, I don't know, just taking time, but also being good in the gym and everything. But yeah, it comes with the struggles. like. Yeah. You said how everyone's used to playing with each right. other year round. Mm -hmm. um, it's finding those connections and everything mm -hmm. again, getting used to playing with each other. So I think the goal for USA has been like, how do we make this happen faster for us? Like yeah. over communicating and just really getting after it yeah, and just sure. trying to force this to happen yeah. at a faster pace. I know when I was first getting in the gym, I felt really thrown in just because it's a totally different system and. You have to make adjustments really quickly. Um, I didn't know as a libero coming from like my college, I'm splitting the court on free balls, and there was a free ball that was like to right back that I totally could have gotten, but everyone was expecting me to get, and I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, yeah definitely tons of communication has helped me advance for sure. Yeah. And just like the girls around me is awesome, and mm -hmm. having all that depth and the strength of play is really, really, really fun. About if you were to think upon your past pro experiences, whether you're, you've played that one week before you got her in Athletes Unlimited or you're overseas. Do you have any advancements or anything that you wish could be different in those leagues or just for the future? Yeah, I think there's so many different leagues going on. Like you have the international leagues, you have like, for example, in Turkey, you have the Turkish League, Italian, you have the Italian League, mm -hmm. and you also have these European Championship Leagues. There's Champions League, there's CV Cup, there's, I don't know, something else. but. Mm -hmm. I really wish all these leagues could kind of work together mm. and able to create something for athletes that's sustainable. I think a lot of girls will get burnt out or a lot of girls will leave the sport early and it doesn't have to be that way, I think. Especially when the Americans are all mostly going overseas. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think for people who have to leave their countries or even like Europeans who have to switch countries too, like it's not hard be or not easy being away for that long. Yeah, for it's sure. really, really hard. So I really wish there was some, something that could happen in order for us to kind of lend all these leagues, because I'm not saying there can't be European League, Turkish League, mm -hmm. uh, international stuff, but I just think they can be, the scheduling can do a better job in allowing, yeah, yeah, just allowing us time to breathe, you know, we're the only sport that goes year round mm -hmm. like this, and um, it's really difficult. Have you, so with LOBB and everything that they're trying to accomplish, they have the clubs that they're going through um, that we played for, mm -hmm. you know, and then they'll have the professional league and kind of that step up system. How do you feel about that? And how do you feel about different 
pro leagues in America kind of starting to advance in the U.S. Yeah, no, I love it. I think the more we can grow our sport, especially now, is mm -hmm. great. And like I said, like I like. I wish the leagues would work together, so I'm hoping that there's a place where we can get AU and LOVB. Maybe it already is. It probably already is. They're so <laughs> smart. They're so on top of things. But like, just to work together and able to create this system where like players can have the opportunity to do what they want. They can play AU. They can play LOVB. They can merge the two. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I just think it can be done better. Yeah. And I'm excited that they're finally taking time to like talk to athletes and mm -hmm. it's gotten so much better since I first started playing, like yeah. just in terms of scheduling and stuff. I'm just excited to yeah. see what they create and also like how that changes the sport of volleyball and how it's played and hopefully that elongates some careers and like makes people want to play longer. I think yeah, now it's sure. like you kind of have to decide, but I just want everyone to be happy and play volleyball. <laughs> That's, that's always the goal. Just everyone be happy. <laughs> yeah. In your different leagues, how has the level of volleyball been at, compared to when you get back in the USA gym? Yeah, um, it's just different styles. Like, Japan obviously has crazy defense yeah. and, like, just crazy serve and pass and everything is just so, you know, the training is just different. Um, I mean, they're killing it right Yeah, now. Uh, <laughs> they crushed us. So, like, <laughs> Yeah, they're doing something we'll well over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. It's just different. Every league is different. Um, I think so far, Turkish and Italian have been really good. Mm -hmm. More roommates. More roommates. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Maybe not. Bella, Kendall, say hi to the oh. pro volley USA. Hey, USA. Hey. <laughs> Jenna Gray, fix your face. <laughs> Jenna Gray. <laughs> but yes, the level of volleyball, um, different styles. Yeah, it's just different country to country. I think Turkish and Italian league are probably the top. top. I haven't played in Brazil yet, but I hear they're mm -hmm. legit too. Every league is different and has its pros and cons yeah. and yeah. And then you kind of talked about the language barrier, especially when you're going to countries like Japan and China and their language is so different. It's not just like a romance language that yeah. maybe you're taking in high school, yes. but you're going to actually have to learn this language and have to communicate with teammates. So. Tell me about the difference between China and Japan and how the language barrier, barrier affected you. And then you have like your American yeah. teammates in Japan, so I'm sure that yeah. made a big difference. Um, I think volleyball is kind of like a universal language That's in true. itself. Like I feel like I don't struggle that much in practices and yeah. um, matches and okay, maybe getting feedback. I don't, I'm obviously not getting a lot of that, but. Wait, do your coaches speak English there? No. No. <laughs> no, okay. no, they don't. I'm um, some do. Mine, yeah. mine didn't um, in Japan and China. So both places I had a translator, okay. which helped um, sometimes in like fast situations, mm -hmm. like game-like. It was kind of yeah. hard to translate mid-game, yeah. you know? But it was harder, more off the court, in forming those connections and those relationships, friendships. It was kind of yeah. um, really difficult. But on the court, it wasn't as big of an issue. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, off off the court was really hard, and just the connections, and also like, what are we wearing to travel? That's, like, and that's they're like true. sending pictures of every little <laughs> item because it's like I don't know. That's what awesome. It, or Did any of your teammates speak, speak English? Like? Um, yes. Okay. In Japan, there was maybe one or two. That's nice. Um, and then in China, there was two or three, but all of them are like very interested in speaking English, yeah. and like. As you start to know them and play with them more, the English will start coming out. Uh -huh. Like this girl will speak fluent English. <laughs> and I'm like, where was this all season? You know? So yeah, it'll come out more. Okay. No, that's awesome <laughs> to know. I guess you don't really think about like the minute things and how Oh yeah, like what time do we have to be at this meeting? Yeah. And, like where is this meeting? Yeah. Um, where is video? Where is video? <laughs> video was impossible, luckily I'm just watching, but yeah. they were explaining like what to do on a play and I'm like <laughs> my know. coach <laughs> my coach at one point told me to follow my heart. <laughs> okay. So anything. Yeah. anything See, it's just a you, though. Yeah. That's good. Wrapping it up here. So USA is currently the number one volleyball country in the world yeah. um, after winning the gold medal. So with more USA leagues and USA pro leagues coming out through either LWB, Athletes Unlimited, do you think that we'd be able to keep some of the top players and some of the members of the women's national team local? Or what do you think would drive that decision to stay here or go overseas? Yeah. Um, I think money <laughs> yeah. plays a very large role. I mean, yeah. people want to say it's experience in this, but when you're looking at these dollar signs right after sure. college, it's it's 
it would be hard to keep the best players in the U.S. without that level of financial support. Mm -hmm. Especially on the women's national team when they're getting paid. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you go to these countries and they don't have the NBA, they don't have the NFL, yeah. they don't, but they do have professional volleyball. Right. And so a lot of these players, the top players in the U.S. are making well over six figures. And yeah. it's just, it's crazy to see that kind of, money being mm -hmm. earned by playing mm -hmm. the game of it's awesome over keep the ball off the floor you <laughs> yeah, know? Sure. so i think money will keep uh, a lot of the top players here but i don't know even like me i'm towards mm -hmm. let's say i'm towards the end of my career mm -hmm. like getting there, <laughs> getting there getting close the idea of playing in the u.s and mm -hmm. staying home mm -hmm. and grounded if it's still at a high level and i'm getting compensated well like i don't see why the top players wouldn't yeah. at least consider so it would make people think twice, three times, and like, you know, want to stay here more. Because um, that level of security and just like safety, you get to be there for weddings and birthdays and things that you miss over the years. So, yeah, I would love, I would love to stay here year round. Um, and I think it's headed that way. You see a lot of players like Morgan Hebbs, for example, yeah. who's like on the national team now and chose to stay at AU this past season, um, mm -hmm. is like, just an example of people staying back you know there's players like Jordan Larson and I did this first season who played half season in China and then decided to stay here in the U.S. for the second half so and is it all Chinese leagues that are the four month long usually yes okay. my first one though we went to like March so okay. I think it all depends on like that year's we'll schedule yeah okay. scheduling yeah. and whatever rules they want to make up in that year you know so but I think you'll you see a lot more players like really choosing yeah. these leagues that are going to keep them in the U.S. longer. So I think that's really cool and mm -hmm. um, something that every U.S. player wants yeah. as a professional league here. I know, and, <laughs> and hopefully as like we start to gain more traction in the U.S., then we'll get those financial opportunities for these players because we just deserve it. And <laughs> I mean, I, I hope the media like will get more coverage and we'll get more, like I said, traction in the future. And sure. I don't know, I just, I. I see all these, I'm getting to train with all these amazing players and I just think there's so many opportunities overseas and I wish that we could keep them in yeah, the US. Yeah, so. volleyball is such a great sport. I feel like it's getting more and more viewership like you saw the NCAA yeah. finals getting... Yeah, it was 1.2 million. Yeah, it's something insane. So I think it's getting there and mm -hmm. the viewership and everything is yeah. growing, but um, yeah, still a lot to, of work lot. to be done. Mm -hmm. but. I don't know, I'm excited. Yeah. It's cool like watching it all happen. So. No, for sure. Well, hopefully we can get that started. Um, <laughs> it starts with interviews like this. So thank you so much Good. for coming. Um, we will be talking about more about pro volleyball in the future, but everyone give her a little round of applause. From home, please. From home, from home. <laughs> thank you so much, Tori. Yes, thank you. Go Pro Ball USA. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.